from the primeval point of concentrated matter, a massive explosion created the universe. Gravity connects the star systems and steers them to the unbounded space. Avalam yara lazina kafiru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda kaan darat kafatak nahuma. That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. And so came into being a universe full of wonders and mysteries waiting to be discovered. Gravity may be the reason for the creation of the universe, but it is also a reason for its destruction. Throughout the life of a star, a constant battle occurs between the energy pushing out and the gravity pushing in. When it runs out of fuel, the star collapses and explodes with the brightness of a billion suns. As the star explodes, it fires out all the elements that it gathered in its lifetime. These are the new stars formed from the elements blown out by these supernova explosions. New stars being born from the death of the old ones. And it was from this cycle of life and death that we came into existence. Because it was in a nebula just like this one, that our sun was born. Around the sun, a network of planets was formed, and our Earth was among them. The glorious Quran says, Moreover, he comprehended in his design the sky when it was smoke and said to it, and the earth, come ye together willingly or unwillingly, and they said, we come in willing obedience. And the Arabic word used in this verse of Surah Fusila chapter 41, verse number 11 is Dukhan. Dukhan does not merely mean gas, it specifically means smoke. And today scientists say that smoke is a more closer and more scientific as compared to gas, because that time it was hot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says samaa banaynaha bi aydin wa inna lamusi'un that we constructed the heavens with strength and we are constantly expanding them to show the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al khaliq the creator Allah is constantly expanding this universe Earth was a smoldering rock dominated by volcanoes but deep in the oceans the simplest of the life forms had begun to form. These life forms grew more complex as they started feeding on the oxygen in the environment, and ultimately, advanced organisms appeared. They continued adapting to their environments and grew to become the creatures that we know today. Allah speaks of things in the heavens and the earth that are at His disposal. Blessed is the one who placed in the sky stars. And then He says, And in the sky He placed a lamp. He calls the sun a lamp in this case, Siraj. The word Qamar means moon. But the word Munir is the one that's really scientific, if you want to take it that way. The word Munir means something given light, something illuminated. So there's the source of light and the recipient of the light. They made every living thing from water. Will they not believe?
With the interval of a few hundred years, Earth's sea level rises, floods begin to emerge, magnetic field flips, volcanoes erupt, Antarctica melts, huge asteroids hit the Earth, new continents begin to appear, and finally, the sun increases its luminosity and swallows the Earth, becoming a red giant. This cycle of star destruction may be terrifying, but it will not bring about the death of the universe. In 1960, a British scientist Peter Higgs predicted the existence of tiny particles that are in us and all around us. He named them the Higgs boson particles. These particles are responsible for giving objects their mass and explain why particles have the mass that they do. Without Higgs boson, you and I and everything we see around us would have no mass and therefore would not be able to exist. So verily, I, God, swear by clusters you can't see, as soon as they run, they disappear. So what are these clusters that the Quran is describing? They're none other than the infamous and elusive Higgs boson particles. The mass of these particles was found to be 126 giga electron volts instead of 127. To physicists, it only meant one thing, that the universe will die not due to asteroids or black holes, but due to mass loss. The Holy Quran describes the death of the universe as, It is the day when people will be like scattered moths and mountains shall be as loosened wool. And this brings us to the end of our journey, from the birth of the universe to our existence, and finally, to the occurrence of nothingness.